Awesome. Welcome back from lunch, everybody. I'm presuming most people have returned. If anyone wants to stick their head out quickly, yeah, awesome. Let's make sure that we've got everyone back in before we jump back to it. Maybe just while we check to make sure that everyone is in, does everyone want to turn to the person next to them and share something that they didn't know that now that they know, as as we've reached the halfway point of the symposium, turn to the person next to you, what's something that you've learnt over the half of the symposium that you didn't know before? Go for it. All right, friends, good work. That was enough time for people to get back in. Uh, thank you very much. Feel free to do that after each of the presentations too. Like turn to the person next to you and share something that you are taking away from this. It's important for that reflection as a part of keeping it in your brain for more than just the time that you're sitting in here. So our first presentation in this bracket is uh, from Simone Cameron um, from Anti Farmers Association. She's the industrial liaison officer and uh, a presentation on drum muster baler. Did I say it right? It's not baller, it's baler. I thought, I, th I, I thought I'd try both, but I'm glad I went for the first one. So on drum muster baler, can you please put your hands together and welcome Simone. Right, eh? cool, awesome. Thanks for that. Thanks for that introduction. And um, I think if it, it probably could do balls, um, maybe golf balls or something <laughs> like that. But um, yeah, so thank you everyone for having me today. I'm um, representing NT Farmers Association. Um, we're an industry body, plant-based industry body that oversees um, agricultural and agribusiness emerging and existing support for our farmers in the Northern Territory. But we also do have a very strong alliance with our local Kanadara Ordco region. Um, obviously this year's presented a few challenges for us, for us to be able to be over there and to liaise as much as we normally do. Um, but we certainly do have a very good strong relationship with our neighbours across the border. Um, so I'm here today to talk about drum muster. Uh, recently back in May, I was appointed the new drum muster consultant, regional consultant for the Northern Territory and for Kununurra. So I'm fairly new into this role, but one thing that I did really identify straight off the bat was that it was, it was a little bit in, in a stagnant state. Um, NT farmers have had the contract for drum muster since 2013. And collectively we have uh, gathered and, and recycled a significant amount of drums, but being a Catherine local, I've lived in Catherine for about 10 years um, and involved in agriculture there for a long time. I uh, was very aware of some of my colleagues down there who weren't necessarily recycling like they could. So I was really keen to take it on board and to ramp it up again, which hopefully I can show you today that we've managed to do that uh, forward. So drum muster, for those of you that aren't aware of drum muster, I'm sure you all are, so I'll just, I won't go on too much. But it, it uh, was a stewardship program that was established in 1998. Um, and the goal is to reduce the uh, amount of non-returnable agvet chemicals into general waste. So in other words, taking that product, which is a HDPE product, um, and putting it into a byproduct and creating like a pellet that then can be used into making other materials. Now we often we all know that if you go to Bunnings, you can go outside or you can see the chairs outside. They're often made by a recyclable product. Um, the Agvet chemical drums are aligned to a specific line of products, so you won't go into Bunnings and buy your outside outside furniture and know that it has come from a chemical drum. That's a different recyclable material. Um, the the ones that we recycle into is a number of different other things. So. Um, there is over about 140 or more chemical manufacturers participating in the program now and every week that changes to be more and more. I think the chemical manufacturers are seeing the value in, 
in being part of that program. It's, it's obviously a very much a feel good program. And, and this is just an indication of some of the different chemical companies that are involved in the drum muster program. All of the containers pretty much to this day now, they either have a sticker, a drum muster label sticker on them, which is that drum muster sign. Did I have it on the front page? I'll just go back, sorry. Uh, no, I've got one further in my presentation. Okay, so, so um, yeah, so there's a number of, of chemical companies and they all either have now, either it's stamped into the plastic itself when the, when the container is manufactured or there's a sticker on board. And for those new companies that are just coming on board, John must have provide stickers that, to the resellers and the resellers are, are, are encouraged to put that drum master stamp on that, on that drum. So the drum muster program since inception has actually, this is updated since in August this year, but 36 million containers have been recycled into the drum muster program, which means 36 million containers have gone into being made into other byproducts for recyclable purposes. Um, 38,000 tonnes of plastic waste have been saved from being into landfill. And as I said to you as in the beginning, um, the Catherine culture is probably a little different to say some of the cultural practices that we see down in, in the southern areas of the country. So it's really important um, to, to really drive that cultural practice change to make sure that we can minimise the amount of containers going into landfill. Um, there are over 100, 820 active sites that are collecting drum, must, um, drum muster containers um, and often uh, the areas predominantly are your, your town council facilities will have a cage allocated for those drums to be collected and at those facilities there are either one or a handful of people that have done the drum muster inspecting training in, and so that they are aligned to being able to know how to collect those drums, what to do in the collection of those drums and to make sure that they are drums that are adequate for collection. So these are some of the products that the drums get recycled into. So we've got uh, bench stools, uh, bollards, ag pipe, and concrete bar stools. So bar stools, they call them, but they're for concrete. So put lead, holding Rio onto con form concrete. And then the most common one is actually wheelie bins. So wheelie bins are predominantly made of AgVet chemicals, containers. So when you're using or going to into recycling your drums, um, you must make sure that the Drum Master logo is on the drum. Um, and as I said to you, there's over 140 participating chemical manufacturers. They all pay a levy. They pay a six cents levy per litre uh, for product. And so it's in their best interest to actually be involved in the program. It's encouraging them to be involved in the program. The drums need to be triple rinsed. Now it's pretty obvious when you haven't, when you receive drums and they haven't been rinsed adequately because you'll, you'll get residue in the drums and those drums are to be rejected. Um, and often it's just a matter of making sure that who the, that the participants who are coming in to recycle their drums that they are aware of the processes and procedures involved in recycling your drums. Um, and that's a part of the inspectors um, and the collection cage facilities responsibility. Um, but it's also NT farmers uh, see it as a big responsibility on their own behalf by when we, when we engage with our wider network of stakeholders. The caps, we do not recycle the caps. I was at a farm down in Mataranka a week or so ago and um, they said, what about all the caps? The caps is actually a different plastic much like the caps on your Schweppes bottles. Okay, they're not part of that 10 cents recyclable cash can, whatever they call it. Um, so yeah, so caps are different plastic. Yes, they potentially are recyclable, but they're not the same plastic as what the drums are made out of. Um, and coordinate your inspection with a drum muster certify inspector. A lot of the different regional sites have different times that you need to either uh, you can't just call in, you have to actually organise an appointment to actually have your drums inspected um, at the time. For any further information, there's the website. And that's the logo um, that you'll see either on, a, on, on the label, on the drum, or actually embedded into the plastic of the drum. So, as I said, six cents per litre on eligible chemical manufactured by participating companies. And there's also another subsidiary to the stewardship program, ChemClear. ChemClear is the uh, removal of chemical waste from a site. 
Um, and at this point in time, it is offered in the Northern Territory, but as you can appreciate, volumes, it's based on a volume capacity. Um, and it is certainly something that going forward in the future, perhaps we need to look at coordinating and logistics behind it. But current existing contractors who go around collecting the chemicals are predominantly based in the southern areas of the country. So um, Drum Muster um, and AgSafe, they actually coordinate that from their main office, which is in Canberra. Um, and um, discussions and they will work out when and if I think there was a, a chem clear run up here maybe a few years ago but there hasn't been one for a while because just the vol volumes that are around we all know though realistically that there probably are definitely opportunities for chem clear to operate on a much more regular basis it's just again a matter of logistics and coordinating what that might look like in the future um, there's a picture of a signage at the Catherine Town Council um, and I'll show you a picture in a minute what happened recently, um, but all, all sites should, should display a sign to show that, to illustrate that they do recycle AgVet chemical drums. And if you don't have one and would like one, make sure you come and see me because I'll get you one. Okay, so NT Farmers acquisitioned a grant from the Northern Territory Government and in March this year, we purchased our fabulously electric blue auto baler. I quite like the colour. I've actually got a pair of shoes the same colour. Um, I don't wear them out there while I'm with the baler. But um, yeah, so um, just to, as an initiative, mostly the initiative behind it was to um, help consolidate the collection of drums. What we were finding is we had centres that were collecting drums, but the logistic of getting those drums to a recycling centre, like say NTRS here in, in, in um, Darwin, um, was quite challenging. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're pallet wrapping empty 20 litre containers or less than and send, putting them on a truck and basically transporting air back to a recycling station. So it wasn't seen as a, it, it's doable, but there's got to be a smarter way to do it. So the baler was purchased to help predominantly our regional and remote areas and also our big, large corporate farms as well. So that was the key behind this baler. So as you can see there, there over in the corner is a number of drums that were sitting in this Catherine Town Council cage for an extended length of time. I think somewhere over, the, over about 18 months to two years, those drums were sitting in that cage waiting for somewhere to go. So um, we rolled the baler in and in the matter of a week, it did take a week, um, we generated about 20 odd bales out of, I think it was over 2000 drums that were squished into that baler. So, um, and here's an example of just showing you some data about what the baler's done in the, in, in the last couple of months. So this is, this is containers by the month from June or July last year, right through to September this year. It's, it was, it's probably not as up to date for September because last week, as I mentioned, was down in Mataranka and we've, we've actually bailed at Catherine Council and at um, Mataranka another 1,400 odd drums. So we're actually up quite a ways, um, but you can see the operational baler and that's only in the Catherine area. So I haven't even had a chance to scratch the surface, to be honest, to get it into other areas. I'm hoping to obviously get that baler out into the Douglas Daly area um, and also up into the Marakai area, Darwin rural area. Um, I know for a fact from visiting lots of farms frequently that there are lots of drums out there that still need to be part of this process. So um, just trying to illustrate that since early August, we've collected nearly four and a half thousand drums just in the Catherine area alone. So they've just popped out of the woodwork, if you like. And also just people being aware that there's something happening, that, that ripple effect. I've worked out that someone is actually in charge of this drum muster and they're, they're my, my local network and counterparts are like, oh, actually, I've got a few drums behind the shed. Do you want to come and have a look? Sure. So it's been, um, it's been really quite, quite busy in the last couple of months and it's just illustrating the benefit of this baler. Um, so the baler is a LS150 trailer baler. Uh, we purchased it through Trethway Industries down in New South Wales. They built the machine onto, the machine is actually designed to sit in a factory on a concrete slab, um, but they've put it and, and built it into this trailer system so that it can be portable transporting around. 
Um, it can bail a large range of products, not just the drums. It can actually even do tyres. Um, and obviously it's based probably on the principles of an old wool baler concept. Delivers 14 tonnes of pressure to the material placed into the unit. And it can squash up to 20, 50 to 70 20 litre drums per bale. So I've got there an average weight of about 100 kilos. We've actually, because the baler hasn't, there's not a lot of data around the bales and the drum muster component. So we've sort of been a bit of a guinea pig, if you like. Um, and we have worked out that initially you can see um, these ones had quite a lot of drums in them. And we've actually pulled back on that so that the bales themselves now we're looking at around 70 kilos to 80 kilos. We've sort of pulled it back a little bit because the unit itself is quite labour intensive and there's nothing other than the pressure plate coming down, the rest of it and the, and the electronic push screen to go and red to stop, the rest of it's quite man labour intensive. So to pull the bale out, to take it off the unit, to bring it, roll it down is all based on manpower. So the heavier the bale, the more awkward and harder it is for the person or people actually manning it. So there's an example of what the Catherine Town Council cage looked like mid-August. Um, I have to admit, when I took on the job of being the drum master person, I hadn't been to the, ca the, the tip for a while. And if I had been, I hadn't necessarily glanced to look at drum master cages, right? So when I, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And then I've gone to Catherine and I went, oh, oh no. Anyway, so um, yeah, look, it's looking very different now. Um, and um, it's been quite successful. The one thing we have noticed though, with the recent spike in temperature and heat and humidity, um, is the, the strapping on the bales. We started with two strapping, now we've gone to three because just to make sure that they don't pop. We've had a few pop at the Catherine, at the Catherine site and that's possibly because of the vibration in the earth from earth moving equipment around and I imagine things like that. So, so that's the baler. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of other things. So our target for drum muster is, um, the contract target is 30,000 30,000 drums per year. So we're a long way, way off that. But in the last two months, August, September, um, we've actually, with the help of the baler and also inclusive of the Kananara um, component, there's been over 6,700 drums taken or recycled for the purposes of, of the Drum Muster program. So that works out about 70% of that has actually come from the baler itself. So it's put it into perspective, I think, how valuable this little unit will be for the, for the program going forward in the future. Um, there are a lot of other stats that you can find on the Drum Muster website around drums. Um, but yes, since inception, um, we certainly have had, you know, a decline or drop off in the activity of the program, but hopefully this baler can actually reinvigorate and reignite. I know I get a lot of questions. What else can it bail? You know, oh, can you do hay? Can you do, you know, all sorts of different things? And yes, it can. Um, but I think as a, as a, as a, an opportunity for our um, NT Farmers members and our, our local producers and operators, um, it's just a really great initiative to help that cultural practice change of not putting your drums into landfill, but actually recycling them into something that is seen as a useful product. Um, and we do actually have the opportunity now to, um, through New Life Waste Recycling in Humpty Doo, um, we're hopefully going to start manufacturing the, the, the pellets that those drums become so that then they can be a by to be used as to made into wheelie bins and things like that. So, um, yeah. So thank you. If any of you have got any questions or you'd like to make contact, um, I'm based out of Catherine predominantly, but I do get up to Darwin once every couple of weeks. Um, and also I'm heading off to Alice Springs or into the depths of the Central Australia on Sunday for a week or so to catch up with all the different counterparts down that way. So um, please feel free to give me a con contact me, contact the office and Robin or whoever answers the phone in at Coolalinga, I'm sure they'll say, yep, you need to call to speak to Simone. Here's a number. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, two quick ones. The cost of the baler? $50,000 grant. Well, it's not much dollars And a bit like the solar panel presentation, yep. uh, 
not sure how many there are out there to seeing how many are being recycled. Do you have the same sort of issue or can yeah. you? Yeah, and as I said to you, I've been um, like a regional member or Catherine member for the last 10 years involved in agriculture. Um, and I know that there's a lot out there that needs to, but I think it's about an education awareness programs, which is why I'm here today. So if there's anyone in the room that would like to, is interested in your jurisdiction and your area that's interested in, in facilitating that, because we know it's not just our agricultural producers in the Northern Territory, it's, it's far wider and breaching than that. But look, yeah, it, it's it's certainly the, this little bailer. It, it potentially is going to be busy for quite some time to get it to get on top of what could 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 potentially be out there. Has there been any thought about returning the empty drums? I mean, this is doing you out of a job, but to the source, to the supplier, the stock and station agent, or whatever they're called, to the reseller. Reseller. I have thought about that. I've had conversations about that. I think. Having worked as an agronomist at a reseller as well, um, I think it would be valuable that some of the collection points are at the resellers so that when you go in to buy more chemical, you can actually deliver your product, or your empty ones there and um, make it really efficient, I think. Um, or even potentially refill it from IBCs. Actually, I forgot to mention, we don't, Drum Muster's not affiliated um, the, the largest containers, they'll take plastic and steel, but the largest is up to 200 litres. We don't do the 1,000 litre IBCs, even though potentially that mould of plastic is the same. Um, a lot of those IBCs are available to be in a recyclable, uh, reusable program. Lower chem manufacturers will do that. Unfortunately, though, here in the Northern Territory, we're a long way away from that capacity. So there again presents that geographical isolation challenges that we have. Um, I guess the seal drum concept directly from the manufacturer is, is, is you know, uh, uh, an occupational health and safety component. If, if resellers were having to fill up certain chemicals at their site, it might, might be a little bit challenging or to te take them back to those centres. I'm not sure that, I think this is why there's this initiative, you know, that the manufacturers pay six cents a, le a litre levy. So they're already paying a cost to fund this program. So it's in their best interest. So even there might, there's probably well manufacturers out there that still aren't on the Drum Monster program, but they actually pay six cents a litre to produce their chemical that then funds the Drum Monster program. So it's in their best interest to get on board because it, it, it's showing that they're being environmentally you know, aware and also, you know, supporting sustainability. It's an interesting one. Any other questions? Yep. Um, not so much a question, just more a fact of, can I book you in to see, because I'll be in Alice Springs, of course, next week, and uh, Alice Springs Team Council. So, yeah, if you pop in, that'd be great. We do have drum muster going on, but I haven't caught up with yourself, so it'd be fantastic. No, that's great. I knew you were here in the room somewhere. No worries. So, that's fantastic. <laughs> no I look forward to catching up with you. Okay. I'll be in town for the business to business expo that's okay. on. So no um, I'll jump in and out and around and see everyone I can. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we have a round of applause for Simone?